All right, we back, Mercy Sports Talk. Appreciate everybody for tapping in. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. Um, but let's talk about Bob Quinn now. I didn't get around to this video yesterday, uh, but he did the press conference call with a lot of Detroit media, even made uh, ESPN last night. I kind of uh, checked it out uh, towards the end of the night. And, you know, he basically, him and Dave Gettleman, the New York Giants, are basically begging people to come move up for a spot. Let's talk about it. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. Um, check, us, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. If you put in Motor City Sports Talk, you should be able to find us there. Should be right here on the video. Uh, but, yeah, my whole thing about it is that, you know, you shouldn't be begging for other teams to jump up to trade up with you. Um, my whole thing is, yes, it's, it's, the, it's, the, uh, it's the best thing to do and the more reasonable thing to do is to trade down and get extra picks. And people saying, oh, that's the only way I'd be disappointed if they don't. But my whole thing about it is this. You got to have some type of uh, threat. As far as when you're trading down, the threat is we know the Lions, we know the Skins may not take a quarterback. The Lions may not take a quarterback. We know they're not going to take a quarterback. We know the Giants, they got their quarterback in the future, right? So then you go down, why in Miami, why would I move up? Why? Why? Why would I move up? So why you make Miami move up? How do you make Miami move up? Is either you threaten to take a quarterback which the Lions threatened to take a quarterback, right? They did all the interviews with the guys, but you go back to the premise of the situation. I mean, to the foundation of the situation. When there was talks about Stafford wanting out of Detroit, they should have never killed that talk. They should have been evaluating quarterbacks. They should have never said, oh, Stafford's our guy. They should have told Stafford, hey, look here, man, we're trying to get you some better players. We're going to play this through the media. And we want you here. Wink, wink. You ain't going nowhere. But we got to play this through the media. So they should have been like, you know what? Hey, we haven't talked to Matthew. Um, you know, we want him here. But, you know, we, we or, or no question, no comment. Or uh, 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 from Bob Aaron. Um, 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 um. He should have said no comment. No comment. No comment. That's it. And it would have made it seem like Stafford was available. Now, what if you get a what if you get an offer for Stafford that you like? Somebody say, "Hey, man, I offer you whoop de whoop a, a king's ransom for him." Then maybe you move him. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, but hey, man, we got a good offer. This, that, and the third. But when it was talks about Stafford wanting now, and they may move on from Stafford, they should have never killed that talk, even if it was a false narrative. So that's their mistake number one. So now they know teams know they're not getting rid of Stafford. They know they not. They don't want Tua. They don't want Herbert. They, they took Chase Daniels is another reason they threw water on the fire. You know what I'm saying? They took Chase Daniels. So we know the, the Lions only carry two quarterbacks on the roster, and they might have one on the practice squad. You sign Chase Daniels. So we know the Lions not taking a quarterback at three. They committed to Stafford. They signed him a backup in Chase Daniels. So at the end of the day, they mishandled this situation. Once again, like Bob Quinn do everything else, he mishandled the situation. Now you're begging for people to come up. I'm not moving up. I'm not moving up. If the skins don't take to it, I ain't moving up. Or if the, 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 the Cincinnati Bengals pull a fast one and they take uh and they will say they take to it and shock everybody. Then it get interesting. Then teams might move up for Boros. But ain't nobody moving up to three, unless, unless a court, unless the skins take a quarterback, or unless two will go one and not Boros, or unless you got another trade partner that want to move up to three. You tell Miami, well, the Chargers trying to move up to three and take two. I mean, you want to move up, or you good at it? And the thing about it is, two is injured, so I don't think people is dying to get two right now. The hip injury and not being able to to evaluate him. Don't be surprised if Tua drop out the top ten. People don't really love Herbert like that. Don't be surprised if Love go before one of those guys, both of those guys though. The mobility, the height, the arm strength. So really, you don't have a hot shot prospect there. Now, if Tua was healthy and Burroughs was healthy, you're in a great position. You're in a fantastic position. 
But that's not the case. But if teams really value Tua, you know, the Lions should be able to move down. They should. If the teams value Tua, somebody going to jump up and want to. May it be the Patriots. May it be a team outside the top 10. May it be the team at the bottom of the top 10. The Chargers, you know, they got Tyrod Taylor. Are they really committed today? They coach say he can be like Deshaun Watson, Patrick Mahomes. Tyrod Taylor old as hell. He ain't, he ain't that. So they for sure need a quarterback. But when you got three quarterbacks that's clustered together because of injury, now you sitting there, you play the odds. I know Detroit won't draft one. I know New York not going to draft one. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if, if that's the case, and you Miami, I, I'm going to have at least, if somebody do move up, I'm going to at least have one of the quarterback prospects I like. If somebody move up to three and four with the Lions and Giants and they take two and they take Herbert and you, the, and you, the, and you know, and three and four, and you the, the Dolphins. Well, you still got love there. Or you still got next year with Trevor Lawrence. You say, I can be bad and I think Lawrence would be a better quarterback than the rest. So, you know, that's that's a, that's a million dollar question right there. But they begging people to, to move up, Dave Gettleman and Bob Quinn, and they two of the sorriest fucking GMs in, in football. They didn't play it the right way. Well, he did. I can tell you, Bob Quinn didn't play it the right way. And um, they should have let the staff for shit go keep going. And they should have kept evaluating quarterbacks. They should have never signed Chase Daniels. There's plenty of Chase Daniels walking out there, bro. And they should be drafting a quarterback at three, to be honest. I would be drafting two. It's the perfect situation for him. He can sit a year or two behind Stafford, get healthy, and take over the reins. I would have done it. That's a life-changing player. People say, what about winning the... the if you if you if you honest with yourself, look at the talent on this team. It's not winning nothing. You know, it's not winning nothing, in my opinion. They don't have enough speed on offense. They don't have no offensive linemen. Um, you know, um, yet. And then the deep the front the front four is just is abysmal. But um, yeah, people talk about the safe pick at number three or taking the safe pick and Jeff Okuda. I mean, you gotta take risks. And Bob Quinn ain't took a risk with the Lions yet. And when he didn't take risks, he still failed. So if you're still not going to take a chance or take a risk, you know what I'm saying, you're going to be in the same predicament. You know, what? All right, if you want to go to – if you if you happy getting a moral, moral uh, a victory for 12 rounds and getting beat up for 12 rounds, you know, your paycheck the same as getting knocked out in the first round and going 12 rounds and getting beat up. You feel what I'm saying? So he got to take more chances. He got to take more risks. And a risk at number three – or moving back would be Isaiah Simmons. That's a risk. He instantly upgrades the speed on your defense. Jeff Okuda, the safe pick. They got a lot of safe picks that didn't pan out. You know what I'm saying? You know, last year, Hawkinson was a safe pick. You don't take a tight end at seven. Taking a cornerback at three is the same thing. This ain't Deion Sanders, bro. Darrell Reeves didn't go that high. Marcus Peters didn't go that high. Marshawn Lattimore didn't go that high. Denzel Ward went that high, and what is Cleveland winning? Jalen Ramsey went high. What did the Jaguars win with him? Nothing. A quarterback position is not going to change life in the NFL. The Eagles, for God's sakes, won a championship without a prominent cornerback. It all begins with the front seven. It all begins there. So, you know, people talk about the safe pick being safe. The Lions have been a safe organization, but at the same time been so stupid and reckless. You know what I'm saying? They all they pick safe. The last few years they saved Taylor Decker, Riley Reeve, Lincoln Tomlinson, TJ Hawkinson. You know, when they take chances like Erica Ebron, everybody knows Erica Ebron had the highest drop rate coming out of college football. You know, when they take chances, it's stupid. Ryan Bros. He had 55 ACLs on his knee. Amir Abdullah, you talking about a 5'9 running back that run a 4'6. Tease Tabor. Talking about a six foot, six one cornerback that run a four seven. Are you freaking surprised why they didn't work out? <laughs> I mean, are you surprised why they didn't work out? I'm not. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, it's it's basic, it's basic shit. I mean, the numbers are in their face, and when they do take risks, it's stupid risks. Right now, they could take a risk and say, you know what? Let's get a quarterback. But then again, people say well, Bob Quinn job on the line. He got a it don't matter. He fired regardless. Everybody see the writing on the wall. Everybody sees the writing on the wall. 
So, you know, at the end of the day, three, they probably going to take Okuda, move back, take Okuda. Like I said before, I said it again, I said it again, I said it again. Numbers, uh, taking a cornerback is stupid as fuck. You've seen so many great cornerbacks go later in a draft. It's stupid. It's not going to upgrade your defense next year. He's not going to score touchdowns, probably. Let's say he do become a lockdown corner. He shut down one receiver. You still got Coleman out there. That's the weak link. You still got them slow linebackers that got to cover the backs and the tight ends. You still got to worry about burnt toast Desmond Trufant getting burnt on the other side. And then you worried about how good your safeties are. And how slow you up in the front seven. You can't produce pressure. So, like, like I said before, man, cornerback is a dumb, dumb pick that high. I wouldn't take that kid that high. I want to get an impact player. You know what I'm saying? I want to get a player that's going to sell some tickets. Or I want to get a player that's going to rush the quarterback and bring some pressure. But um, he also said that Big V, and I'll talk about this too, Big V might slide into a guard. They open the slide him on the inside. You know, who told you guys that? I told you that's going to slide him on the inside. They're probably going to draft the offensive tackle. Don't be surprised if they don't take if they take Christian Wirfs and he saw, he's, uh, they move down and they're able to get Christian Wirfs and he played a right tackle. You know, and I think that would be a good move for him. You know what I'm saying? Could he eventually move to left tackle? Yes, yeah, arm's a little short. But, you know, you put Wirfs and Big V on the right side and on your know, right side of your line with Ragnar, yeah, I think you're looking at, you know, a uh, better protection for Stafford. I think you're looking at a better run game. And if you're able down in the middle of the draft to get a good guard, like you got Riley Reef a few years ago or a while ago who, who balled with New Orleans with Martin Mayhew Luan, and you put him at left guard, you know, all you got to do is about, think about replacing uh, Taylor Decker. And people say, well, why don't you put Taylor Decker on the right side? When you can't run block, you can't be on the right side. That's the run blocking side. Taylor Decker is pitiful in right, in, 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 at, at run blocking. That's the problem. He pitiful. So a big V slide on the inside, that's a great move. And he also, if somebody get injured, he also can play the right tackle. Then you still got Terrell Crosby out there. So, if you know, if Taylor Decker's struggling to get injured, you can kick Worfs to the left side, give him some help, kick big V to right tackle, or kick Crosby to right tackle, kick big V in the right in the, in the right guard. You know what I'm saying? So they still got to back up, get a backup center, but big V probably can back up the center too. So, you know, Christian Wurst would make a, a ton of sense here. Or if they could find another uh, tackle, the, dude, the kid from Louisville. Play him on the right side, big guy. Play him on the right side his rookie year. You know what I'm saying? Big V on right guard. If he struggle, put Crosby there. If he excel and, and Taylor Decker struggling, kick the Malachi kid from Louisville, can't remember his name, and, and put him on in a left tackle when, you know, Taylor Decker just got a ride to pine. If he do good in the first eight, I'll kick him to the left side. So, I'm kind of warming up to the idea of drafting the tackle, you know, in the first round if they move down and get multiple picks. I'm warming up to that idea. I would take that offensive lineman over Jeff Okuda because it's critical. You build through the trenches, and it, it gives you a number of possibilities on how you can move. And then they one right guard away in the draft or a development guard, you know, the big kid from Wisconsin. They said he should step up this year to having a solid offensive line. You know what I'm saying? And then if you take the kid worse, or if you take the kid from Louisville, which I believe in the Louisville kid, more of the left tackle because his dimensions, his height. Next year, they can be the left tackle. Get rid of Decker. Crosby could be the right tackle. He couldn't be the right tackle. You get another right tackle, you got a line for years. So, um, and if that don't work still, and you done went through, you know, Bob Quinn, let's say somehow he he will, I think he will survive next season. Let's say they, they you know, he rebuilt the line three times since he's been here. He rebuilt it three times, you know, and uh, if this is the case or this is the second time rebuilding the line, excuse me, if it don't work, I just think it's the coaching, you know, I think they got to get better position coaches as well. So, yeah, Big V can solve the inside, but I'm warming up to taking the offensive tackle if they move down. Uh, I am worse. I like the kid from Louisville because only reason I like the kid from Louisville a little bit better is because he got the length to play left tackle and take over for Taylor Decker. So that's why I like him a little bit better, but. I think offensive linemen is where I'm kind of pointing at. And people say, well, CJ, is that the safe pick? No, that's the right pick. <laughs> that 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 offensive tackle is going to be pay more dividends than Jeff Okuda is. You need to protect Stafford, and you need to solidify the run side of the line. And if they're able to kick Big V out to, to, left, to right guard, and they're able to get another left guard in there, 
that offensive line should be better. And then if De Decker struggle after eight games next year, if we give a season, I kick him to the left side and I let Crosby play the right side and Decker can walk. So usually when the money on the line, you know, guys step up. Decker might have a great year this year. I doubt it. Just think that shoulder injury was all bad for him. So appreciate everybody for checking in, man. Um, I don't know. I might go live today or tomorrow. Um, you know, quarantine. Hopefully it's nice enough so I can walk the dog. We ain't walked all week. We usually walk a few miles a day and jog back to the house from the park, man. So hopefully it's nice enough uh, to get, a, you know, burn some energy off, man. But I do appreciate everybody that support the platform. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you can also just reach me out at any time at those platforms. Twitter the quickest way, man. Don't forget to check out our podcast as well. The link's in the description. Favorite your boy. I, I just got on Overcast, too. I'm on all a lot of podcasts. Anchors, uh, Anchor points you in the right direction. If you want to listen to me on Spotify, um, I ain't got approved by Apple yet, but Google Podcasts, a lot of different podcasts we got approved for. So we got three episodes. Uh, if you'd like to hop on the show, um, let me know. Um, I'll invite people on the show so we can have a different dynamic. So um, check out the podcast, links in the description, social media there. Uh, quickest way is Twitter. Um, all the links in the description. Want to make a donation, cash out, PayPal in the description. One time for the one time. Motor Street Sports Talk. And don't forget to check out the channel out. Goodfellas Sports TV for more sports, music, news, and entertainment. We go.